praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, this is the pastor's corner with Deacon Jones. God bless your heart this morning. Uh, sitting in for the pastor. And uh, we are uh, fast approaching the middle of March. We are glad you could join us uh, this morning. And I just want to give you a tidbit of uh, what's on my heart because we've been preaching the gospel all throughout this year. And uh, we are going to continue to delve into uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of God, the gospel of the kingdom, the good news, um, the good news of his coming. And the gospel, I believe, is not just concerning uh, the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but it is, it is a redemptive message about who his people are. And how God is going to bring his people back. Uh, he said his people were scattered all over the world according to uh, the promise that he made Abraham. The people would be numbered, if you could number them, number them as the stars of the sky or as the sand uh, of the uh, seashore. So God's people are numerous. God's people are everywhere. Uh, when they disobeyed him, they were taken captive into every nation. And so I just want to tell you today that there's been a plan to mix with God's people from the beginning in Genesis. As I taught in uh, my last sermon uh, here a couple of weeks ago, that there has been a diabolical plot by Satan, by the enemy, to get into the seed of man, to thwart the coming of Christ. Um, we know about giants that were in the land. We know about all of the sin and, and the iniquity that was so uh, uh, perverse and so rampant that uh, God had destroyed, had to destroy the earth and uh, by the flood. Uh, we understand that um, before Christ was born, that Herod, and we don't even know who Herod is because people don't talk about uh, who Herod was. And we want, we can't get into that now, but later on, uh, he decided that he would try to destroy all the children, all of the seed, uh, you know, and that was the plan of the enemy. Uh, we saw that uh, by Pharaoh, that same spirit of Pharaoh, where he tried to destroy uh, all the children of Israel. All the, He told uh, to throw all the Hebrew boys into uh, denial, you know, and that spirit is still in the earth today. Um, Jesus uh, told his disciples to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, uh, you know, the teaching of the Pharisees. And so let me get into some scriptures here because there's still uh, a spiritual force that is still trying to corrupt the seed of God and the people of God. Um, Jesus uh, taught the parable about the wheat and the tares and allowing the tares to grow up with the wheat until the end times because they are so mixed in that you don't know who's who, right? So he says, let them grow up. But here's what I want you to see, that there's a diabolical plot, okay? When you look at Psalms chapter two, it says, why do the heathen rage, okay? And the people plot a vain thing, the kings of the earth set themselves and rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, okay? Saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. There's, there's a conspiracy. There's a plan to get rid of God's people. But it says in verse four, he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. He shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure, saying, yet I have set my king on my holy hill in Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and you shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, be wise, O kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear 
and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all those who put their trust in him. See, this is talking about Jesus as the son, amen? And he has been begotten of the father. But guess what? It is also talking about his people. It is also talking about the nations of the earth. It is also talking about his judgment on those who have decided that they want, that they want to come against his people. Let's go, let's go into Psalm 83. This is a prayer to frustrate the conspiracy against Israel. This is a Psalm of Asaph. It says, do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace and do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult and those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people. That's in verse two. And in verse three, it says, they have consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. For they have consulted together with one consent. Listen to this. They form a confederacy against you. It's right here in the Bible, a confederacy. This is nothing new. This is nothing new. It's just coming out in the latter days what's going on. There is a, a, a systematic demonic attack against God's people. It says the tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites. Who are the Ishmaelites? Okay. Moab and the Hagrites, Gebel and Ammon and Amalekite, Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre and Assyria also join with them and they have helped the children of Lot. And the prayer says, deal with them as you dealt with Midian, as you dealt with Sisera. How many remember Sisera? As with Jabin at the brook Kishon, who perished at Endor, who became as refuse on the earth, right? And so he goes on and to ask God to take vengeance on them and to deal with them, right? Because there is a confederacy, there is a conspiracy that is going on by Edom and the Ishmaelites against the people of God, right? All right. Let me move on. Let me move on to John chapter 8. We know a very popular passage from Jesus in John chapter 8. When you get to verse 31, he says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. But listen to what they responded. They said, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you shall be made free? Now, we pass over that a lot, and we never really look at that verse. John chapter 8, verse 33, they are claiming to be Abraham's descendants, but they say we have never been in bondage to anyone. Now, if you know the history about Israel and God's people, you know that they have been in bondage. They've been in bondage to the Babylonians. They've been in bondage to the Assyrians and they've been in bondage in, in, to the Egyptians. So we never ask the question, who are these people saying that they have never been in bondage to anyone? But Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Right now, when you go and you look into this chapter later on, you'll see that this chapter started off with Jesus dealing with a woman caught in adultery. And he said, whoever is without sin, let them cast the first stone. And this chapter ends with these people casting a stone at Jesus because he says before Abraham was, I am. 
And to them, that was blasphemy. So they cast a stone at him trying to kill him. And so I'm telling you today that there is a conspiracy in the earth concerning God's people. When you look at Revelation chapter 12, I'm going to tell you it's supernatural and then I'm going to close. Revelation chapter 12. This is why you see all of this stuff going on in the earth. Starting at verse 12, it says, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For what? For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. This is why you see all of this violence in the land. This is why you see people off the chain, people uh, shooting, the escalations of murder and killing. It's because the, Satan is getting into people. He knows his time is short. He knows his time is short. It says, now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. Who is the woman? And who is the male child? The male child is Jesus. So the woman is Israel. The woman is Israel. But the woman, in verse 14, was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place. This is a place of safety. This is a place where she is nourished from, for time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. Now, as we've talked before about the promise of God in chapter three of Genesis about um, the deliverer coming through the woman, the seed that would crush the head of the serpent. Now, if God is going to bring this promise to pass, he has to preserve him. He has to preserve not only the Christ, which is the seed, but he has to preserve his people. And so how does he preserve him? And how does he preserve them? It's written right here. It says she was hidden. The true people of God are hidden. They are hidden in the wilderness. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. If the devil can't beat, beat the church, what does he have to do? He has to join the church. He has to try to mix his seed. He has to try to mix his evil ones with the true people of God. He has to mix in his false religion. He has to mix in his false teaching. This is the, 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 the uh, rhetoric and the false information and the lies and the deceit that he's spewing out of his mouth. And it's all to bring out who are the true people of God so he can persecute them, so he can find them. But they are hidden in all the earth. It says the earth helped the woman. See, it's right there in the text. Verse 16, the earth helped the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And in verse 17, it says the dragon was enraged with the woman. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and who have the testimony of Jesus Christ. He went to make war with the church. He went to make war with the remnant of the church of God. And that's where we are today. That's where we are in the end times today. There is a war on the church. It's supernatural. It's not just man made. It's not just people coming against the church with false doctrine. Is, is more than that. It's people infiltrating and trying to make you believe a lie. Trying to make you believe that Jesus is not the Christ, the Son of God. Trying to get you to apostatize. Trying to get you to come over to the dark side, to the other side. It's more to it than meets the eye. It's more to it. And I just want to give you a little bit today. I can't give you a lot. But pray, church. Pray that your heart is right, that you are following the true gospel, that you know that Jesus is the son of God and that he's coming back, not just for, um, you know, for uh, the church, but he's coming back for everyone who repents. We have to make, a, make this message clear to the world. We have to make this message clear to the world. We have to get out of the four walls of the church. We have to get out of our comfort zone and we have to preach the gospel. That's our job. It's not to play church, it's not to entertain, but it's to be serious about the work and the mission that God has called us to. So remember that God loves you. 
and that you have a soul. You have a soul, right? And so you need to get right with God. We are at 2238 Courtney Avenue in the city of Norfolk, St. Paul Christian Fellowship. Until next week, God bless. We'll see you next time. Pastor will be back by then. In Jesus' name, God bless. Amen. Bye-bye.